self-storage is big business and the answer to our overcrowded homes. Oh, oh gosh. Gee. Bring back some memories. Yes. <laughs> but some have taken their storage hoarding too far. It's not all mine, they're one or two else's. No, 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 no. Hanging on to things they don't see or need. It's time to save now. And it's costing them a fortune. It's over £2,000 a year. I need help. I'm in a desperate state. I'm Aggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. You're paying to store storage. I'll be asking hoarders to unlock the doors of their units. It's just crazy. Empty out their stash. You know it makes sense. I can't. <laughs> and choose to either keep it. Keep to sell? No. Skip it or sell it. I despair. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems. Anything between 15 and 20,000. Wow. To take to auction. How did I have it? And make some hard cash. 280 then. In today's show, our big time hoarders say hello to a mountain of memories. My life. <laughs> this is going to take longer than I thought. But do they have what it takes to say farewell to their past for good? I got memories. I reckon we'll be keeping. One or two, maybe. And have they been hiding priceless pieces? A piece like this is worth more than all this lot put together. Put together to put pounds in their pockets at auction. 120 has them. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Hello and welcome to Storage Hoarders. I'm in Salisbury, determined to cleanse some cluttered souls. It's time to get organised and relieve them of their rubbish as I ask them to keep it, skip it or sell it. Our first hoarder is bar manager Duncan Scott with his landlady mum Maggie. Duncan wants to call time on the storage, which has already cost him over £2,000 in just under a year. So what's the story, Duncan? You open a cupboard, you find something that you've got no room for, I just put it into storage and worry about it later. Duncan lives in the cathedral city of Salisbury, bordering Salisbury Plain, where you'll find the ancient Stonehenge Circle dating back over 5,000 years. Duncan is a self-confessed hoarder and has had a long relationship with storage. I've been storing stuff for 10 years. This particular unit I've had for six months. When I need, say, a toaster or a kettle, rather than going to storage where I've got a choice of three in different colours, it's easier to actually go and buy one but his latest fling with storage has now become a family affair. It's not all my stuff. Um, half of it's mum's. The other quarter is my brother's. Duncan is now carrying the can for the family storage, and mum Maggie admits she's not exactly helping Duncan's dilemma. Duncan's hoarding things for me, because I've moved so often, and I've moved from bigger houses, and this pub is very small. We just store stuff. But some of the things are mm, difficult. I always say, I always say, okay, there's keepsakes and there's bits mm. and pieces, sentiments. If you, if I gave you a three foot by three foot box and mm. said, anything that goes in that box that you want to keep stays, when you probably went through everything, you'd probably find it would fit in that box, rather than in amongst the drawers, the rubbish, oh. the bits oh, and pieces no. that is so out of date. This hoarding duo are now convinced their storage has had a long enough lock-in. I think the time has come now where I've got to get rid of all my excess stuff. I think everything really needs to go. And the money can be utilised to make it much easier to live upstairs. Duncan's got some very good ideas on how to streamline it and make it better for us because he's actually agreed to come back and live in the pub and look after his mother. Bless his heart. So will Duncan moving in with his mum be the nudge for these die-hard hoarders to give their stash its last orders? So it's me against you two today, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. What's the story behind your storage? Well, I used to have a big house, and then when I downsized, I thought I'll keep it in case the boys want to use it. What, the stuff? Well, you know, furniture, no, I think, curtains... I, I, think, I think basically what happened is when you moved down here, mm. you left everything for me to take with me. I don't want to get rid of things in case the boys mm. could use it. Do you share your mum's taste in furniture and furnishings? Mm. Of course you do. Yes, I love chintz. <laughs> Hold on, oh, no. Maggie, <laughs> let Duncan speak. Some of the furniture is nice. Some of the furniture is very classic. 
but then you know I'm not having a, a twee little tea room. It sounds to me like you're using your sons as an excuse for hanging on to stuff that you can't really bear to see the back of. No, no, no I genuinely think if they're short of money and I've got excess stuff they could use it. So two hoarders who seem to be keen on clearing out. Mm. I don't know which way this is going to go but we need to get started. Okay? Let's okay. do it. Okay. I want Duncan and Maggie to be raising a glass to a clutter-free future. Our second storage hoarder is Lynn Pollard, helped by her friend Will. Lynn was forced to suddenly take on storage and has already racked up £2,140, holding on to her possessions. So how did she get here? Uh, well, I had my house repossessed, so I actually had to find somewhere to store all my things. Lynn also lives in Salisbury, the county town of Wiltshire. One day, she was happily living in a four-bedroom detached house. The next, there was a knock at the door. It was, it was very stressful. I had one day to go in and clear everything. It was the breakdown of Lynn's marriage which saw her say goodbye to her family home and quickly move into rented accommodation, yeah. with all her worldly possessions finding a new home in storage. Memories. Memories were in there and there. Yeah. Not there. Not the house. No, true. All right. The first few times I went there, all I did was burst into tears because the whole thing of losing my home and, and everything else is my life. It's, it's everything. It. It's what my kids growing up. It's, it was all the emotion tied up in, in losing my home, which I wouldn't want anybody to go through. It's really hard. And the, and the aftermath of having to sleep on people's sofas and, you know, being beholden to people is not easy. It's not easy at all. Just a minute. Best friend Will thinks now is the time for Lynn to put an end to her sentimental attachment with her belongings. She doesn't need to keep the table that she sat at when she made a print with the boys. She can keep the print. She doesn't need to keep the sofa that she sat on when she read the story. She can keep the memory. I think he's going to be there going, you don't want that, you don't want that, get rid of it. Get rid of it, it needs to go. And I'll be saying, but I want to keep that, please. So can I get Lynn to move on and let go of her emotional hoard? How many units do you have here? Three. You've got three units here? <laughs> yeah, okay. two big ones and a little one. OK. And are you looking to downsize or Yeah, clear? because there are things that I do want to keep to move on with. Yes. And how do you feel about actually shedding a lot of your stuff? I think it's going to be difficult uh, because I do have the hoarding instinct. Um, mm -hmm. And how are you feeling about actually seeing it again? <sighs> kind of emotional, probably. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm worried that what you feel is that what you have now in storage, and that is, that is all you have, and it's going to be hard for you to let some of that go. Uh, you've hit the nail on the head there, but I have to be realistic. I need yeah. the money to move on, yes. so I've got to look at it as an end, a means to an end. Mm. Will, is she good at making decisions? No, not for <laughs> herself. Not Would you herself. agree with that, Lynn? I'm very good at making decisions for other people, right. and I'm very good at fighting other people's corners, but when it comes to me, I'm a right wuss. I think Lynn's now at a much better place mm. than she's been in a very, very long time. Mm. And I think when we get this dealt with, she'll be even better. So we've got a big day ahead. Shoulders feeling broad? Yeah. Ready yeah. for this? You so. ready for this? I'm ready. You sure? Yeah. Good. Let's do it. Come okay. on, then. <laughs> we've met our storage hoarders and heard about that excess baggage. Next, it's time for them to open the doors to their hoards. Coming up, Duncan reveals how to store in style. I bet you got quite like wearing them, don't you? I do, actually. You know, I've got a, you know, a secret fetish, really, for them. <laughs> Lynn shows the boys who's boss. Right. Thank you, guys. That way. And both hope to locate oh. enough value in their stuff to make money at auction. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm here to take a closer look at some horrible hoarding habits and help these people take stock of their pile once and for all. Earlier, we met bar manager Duncan and mum Maggie. Duncan wants to put an end to the storage he's had stacking up and make some cash to renovate the upstairs of the pub for him to move into. Because he's actually agreed to come back and live in the pub and look after his mother. 
bless his heart. And Lynn, who after the breakdown of her marriage suddenly found her life in storage. She's now determined to tackle her emotional hoard and hopefully raise some cash for a deposit on a new place. Big changes. Yeah. You're doing well. Thank you. Later, our antiques expert will cast his keen eye over their hoards to see if there's anything of value to take to auction. First to open up their unit and face the hidden heaps are Duncan and Maggie. Lord, how long we had those? On first inspection, it looks like Duncan has spent two grand storing a pile of junk. Um, let's get on with it. <laughs> Duncan, were those yours? No, he loved that bit too small, I think. I just hope there's something of value under that chaotic surface and that mother and son can work quickly as a team. What is that? I think it's a sugar sifter spoon. Yeah, but why would you have holes in it? <laughs> Stupid. To sift sugar? Oh, God, that was my mother's. What's that? It's a cake slice. I think they need a helping hand if they're going to get through this compendium of clutter. Do you know how old this might be? No, because, uh, as I say, it was, uh, it was an aunt of my yeah. Um, yeah. husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's just a nice... It's a nice piece of furniture, but it does take... It's got a, oh, I see. Yeah. So a this is the desk. writing... Yes, part. but you see, this is all yeah. damaged yes. here. It's no point in keeping it, I think. Oh, good. I'm going to have good. nothing left. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. And it's not just Maggie finding curiosity among the horde. Hello. What's this? A sword of some description. Wow. Bring He's it, the, Bring it out. Let's have a look. This <laughs> <laughs> is like Excalibur. You know. Do you want a hand? Do you want me to do it for you? <laughs> <laughs> It's always the way, though. You'll probably touch it and it will just fall straight out. I know. There might be a clip on it. No, there used to be two little screws there holding Golly. it. But I think it's been in there so long, it probably needs to be tapped out professionally or something. Do but... you have um, sort of artefacts on your wall in the pub? Um, yes, but you don't put things in the pub which <laughs> can damage anybody. You need to weld it. I think yes. you need to yes. weld it to the thing. Okay. Um, do you want to place that out there? Because that is a C. Yes. Well, I hope that will add to the cell pile. But I think Duncan and Maggie are going to need more than a large sword to cut a sway through this sprawling stash. Now it's time for Lynn to open up to her past life, taken away after the breakup of her marriage. There you go. My life. <laughs> this is going to take longer than I thought. Oh, come on. I think Will's right. This unit is absolutely bursting at the seams with all of Lynn's possessions. All right, shall we start? OK. Come on, then. Well, what's in here? I don't know. What's in there? Books. Books. OK. okay. Can what's Lynn what? tackle her emotions and rise to the challenge? You've got coffee beans. Oh, right. OK. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> Bag of memories. I reckon we'll be keeping. One or two, maybe. This is essentially Lynn's life contained in a storage unit. She's not seen her belongings for nearly a year, so it's hardly surprising she's getting emotional. I want to give her a helping hand. OK, then. How are you doing? Oh. Hey there, we've started. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've got a way to go, though. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> yes. A lot of memories. Look, we're going to have to get everything out here. That's my keeper. Thank You're you. very scary. <laughs> Lynn might need to hold on to a few items for her new place, but the majority of this massive hoard is simply going to have to go. Oh, my goodness, there is so much stuff there. As long as she can decide really quickly what she wants to keep, and I hope it's a minuscule amount, then we'll be OK, but it's a lot to get through. Yeah. It's now time to sort the wheat from the chaff. To help our storage hoarders, I've asked them to sort their belongings into three categories. Keep it for those items they really want to hold on to, skip it for any rubbish that's a waste of space, or sell it for the items that could recoup some cash. I've also added a charity bin for anything that's too good to throw away. I brought in some helping hands and found our hoarders the space they need to get decisive with their items. Stop it. Oh, that was my mother's. Somewhere. 
right. It's good. Right. Thank you, guys. That way. Looks like Lynn's storing everything bar the kitchen sink. Though it wouldn't surprise me if we saw one of those hiding away too. With everything out in the open, our hoarders have the lay of the land in front of them. Duncan and Maggie's hoard is an eclectic mix of anything and everything, from chandeliers to brass ornaments, a collection of possibly vintage wines and some potential gems. Lynn, on the other hand, is faced with an overwhelming spread of sentimental belongings. This is going to be a tough battle with emotions if she stands any chance of downsizing her storage. So while Lynn and Will get stuck in, I've spotted something of Duncan's which definitely deserves the boot. What are these? They are leopard skin pimp shoes. A completely fake leopard skin pimp shoes. Oh, they are amazing. What on earth have you got these for? Well, occasionally you see for fancy dress, I had to go dressed as a pimp. <laughs> oh, Lord, they are horrendous, aren't they? Oh, Duncan, that is hilarious. I bet you got quite like wearing them, don't you? I do, actually. You know, I've got a you know, secret fetish, really, for them. <laughs> Ooh, Meanwhile, Maggie's found some nice. shoes of a well, different variety. Desert orchids, That's first Cheltenham yeah. gold cup. That's right. And somebody said they're quite authentic because they're like a thumbprint or somebody's oh, fingerprints. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Well, I think yeah. I well if they that. are authentic, Duncan and Maggie could have backed a winner. Now, what about all this wine here? What's the story behind this? Well, as publicans, you can understand that we have got some interesting bottles. This is where we need some time, some expert advice to help us. Yes, I'm sure. With the popularity of wine increasing, more and more people are collecting wine for either personal use or as an investment. Duncan has over 200 bottles in his collection, so I've arranged for him to take a sample of them to see Dominic Lockyer, a wine connoisseur, to see if there's any value in his collection. Good morning. Hi there, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Ah. Here right. are some wines. Come through. In simple terms, a vintage wine is made from grapes all grown and harvested in a single year. Wine collectors will always look for a famous name, a good vintage and one that has received rave reviews. I want to find out if Duncan has been hoarding some valuable vintage vino. We've got some very old wines here that probably should have been drunken about 20 years ago or so. Um, Taking a look at this one here, I mean, one of the things about this bottle here is you can see from the level of the wine in the neck that uh, that's kind of called ullage. So it's lost a bit of liquid, which basically means air's got in. It's pretty much going to be kind of vinegar, vinegar. by now. You can see that it's kind of brown and gunky and uh, wouldn't be very nice suitable, to drink. Suitable for your chips. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I mean, the good news is there is a couple of things here. For a wine, to age any length of time, it has to be a good quality wine to start off with. Um, luckily, this is a good quality wine um, from uh, a domain called Ro Roche Pertuis. Uh, Roche -Pertuis. Uh, it's a 1999, so it's a bit younger than some of the other bottles there. But if you look at the colour through this, you can see there's quite a good bit of red colour to it, not really showing any brown coloration. Some vintage wines can be unbelievably expensive. Recently, three bottles of 1869 Chateau Lafitte Rothschild sold at a Hong Kong auction for nearly $700,000, making it the most expensive wine ever sold. So, has Duncan got the taste for collecting good wine? The Cornas is worth maybe 20, 25 pounds, maybe 30 pounds, something like that. So, you know, if you've got mm. six bottles, 12 bottles, um, why not group them together? And you could always approach a, a local auction house or a wine merchant, and they might be interested. But the other ones, where were they? Something like that, I recommend you pour down the sink as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so now Duncan knows the true value of his collection. What does he think he'll do with it? What I'm going to do with the wine now, after hearing Dominic's great advice, is I'm going to group all the bottles together, the ones where I've got a quantity of some, half cases and full cases, and the single bottles I'm going to enjoy. So let's get the corkscrew. Back at the unit, Lynn and Will are wading through Lynn's hoard of belongings, which were forced into storage following the repossession of her house. Fortunately for Lynn, Will is taking charge, and where there's a will, there's a way. Tell you what, you throw that one, I'll buy you a cutlery set. <laughs> I've got a cutlery set. Well, then you don't need that one, then. 
OK, you can throw it away, Will. Good, good. But there are some things closer to home that are definite keepers. What about this weed share, then? Oh, is this this? I'm keeping this. Oh, is that your baby in that actual chair? Yeah, that's my Joshy. Oh. He's now six foot and he'll be totally embarrassed. Oh, that but, is uh, cute. Yeah. So you're keeping this? Yeah. There'll, there'll be a teddy bear or something sat on it, I think. Or maybe even a grandchild one day. Oh, well, yeah, you never know. All of Lynn's belongings were suddenly forced into storage following the breakup of her marriage. Best friend Will is proving great support and I wonder if she could have done this without him. I'll throw it away when she's not looking. Don't you dare. I'm really pleased at how brave Lynn is being, but there are some reminders of the past she wants to hang on to. So what are you keeping in here? Oh, well, there's the, the fridge. But it's a bit big for one person, isn't it? It's a family size fridge. <laughs> yeah, I know. Would you not be better at actually selling it? I've let go of a lot of things today, and mm. that was the one thing I really wanted to keep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that. I've given up so much other stuff, mm -hmm. and I've let it go. Yeah. Just give me this one thing, eh? Yeah. Do you feel as if it's... If you let that go, then it's too much? OK. Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Just yeah. give it a think, though. Just give it a think. That's OK. Yeah. It symbolises that it fed your family and your family aren't at home anymore. That's why it's hard. Yeah. My one luxury? Yeah. You know what? We're not going to say any more about it. Good. OK. It's Lynn's life that we're talking about. You know, she's in her 50s. There is so much stuff. And with two children, she's accumulated tons and tons of stuff and lots of little bits and pieces and every time she opens a box it's more kind of memories and stuff coming out and you know it's now nearly time for Tom to get here so I'm slightly anxious that we're going to be here all night quite honestly. I really hope Lynn can do this and turn her life around. The clock is ticking for our storage hoarders but there's just enough time for one final push. Do you know what it is yet? <laughs> They've battled emotions and stared downsizing in the face to put a conclusion on the clutter. Sale? So? Yes. OK. Lynn's done really well to battle with her emotions and sort all her belongings into piles. She might be keeping a few items, but there's a handsome sale pile, and the charity bin is overflowing. Likewise, Duncan and Maggie have also made good progress managing to wade through and sort the mountainous hoard they've been storing. So, how are you feeling? Um, a bit funny. Really? <laughs> Tell me about it. I don't think I can. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I sorry. think you can. No, oh, I, I suppose it's coming. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. It's coming from my little husband's. Mm. For Maggie, clearing out has rekindled some rather special memories of her RAF pilot husband, who was tragically killed during a test flight. I knew it'd be like that. But, oh. Um, Anyway, I've kept all that. Mm. <laughs> Have you? Yes. But it's strange, isn't it? I, I thought I was quite... I mean, it's a long time ago. Mm. 25 years. 25 years. Mm. Yeah. I was seven and a half when he died. Actually, yeah. He's in a pod. No, definitely. Yes. I'm my father's son. Chip off the old block, I mm. think. So handsome. I try. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'll be proud of what we're doing because we are having to, unfortunately, make some hard decisions mm. and stuff. Yes. But then... He wouldn't want us just sat round um, paying out and shelling out that money. No, He'd no. He'd want us to be spending it on booze. <laughs> and having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a tough day for both Lynn and Maggie, but with some help from the boys, their hoards have been sorted into keep, skip and sell piles. Now they're ready for Tom to see if they have anything of value. Coming up, could a pair of shoes bring Duncan and Maggie good news? If they are right, they're worth hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Ooh. And will Lynn find anything in her pile to make her smile? There's not a lot of value here. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm in Salisbury helping some big-time storers streamline their stash by asking them to keep, skip or sell. Self-confessed hoarders Duncan and Maggie simply can't let go and have amassed an eclectic mix of knick-knacks over the years. It's now time to find out if there's anything of value in their cell pile. Expert Tom Keane has been dealing in the world of antiques for the past 20 years. 
So, has he found any treasures to help recoup some of the storage costs? So, Tom, now you've had a chance to look through Maggie and Duncan's treasure trove, what do you think? I'm a bit bewildered, really. It's a nice mixture of things. I like this. It's got the um, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Mother with Desert Orchid at the top right-hand side. Could these be right? If they are right, they're worth hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Ooh. Would be nice. Yeah. But they might be wrong. Right. My, be wrong. my well, question is, oh. why only two? Yes, because they have four, don't they? Don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do, don't they? They do they're, have four they're, legs. They're, they're, yeah. yeah, that's correct. Horses have four legs. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I suppose the only reason I have two is because the other two are to give to somebody else. OK. Yeah. 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 Right. And they could be in the uh, Newmarket Racing Museum or oh. the Cheltenham mm -hmm. Racing Museum, mm -hmm. who knows? Mm -hmm. So, but interesting. Seven. Right. Yeah. Yes. What about the black desk down there? That came from my late husband's uh, aunt. She gave it to us as a present when we first bought our first house in Scotland. It's not a bad model. Mm -hmm. The restoration would cost £150, £200 on it. The desk is worth as it is, two to three hundred pounds for the damage. But put right, it's worth six or seven. Yeah, I didn't. Mm. Yes. Mm. That's good actually, because I didn't think it was really worth anything. Mm. No, that's good. Is that actually. more than you were expecting? I would have probably thrown it all away. <laughs> no, it's all right. You do well. Tom has picked out an interesting selection of items to go to auction, starting with the Desert Orchid racing shoes with an estimate of fifty to a hundred pounds and the Victorian side table, which despite the damage could still be worth up to £250. He also suggests a group of four antique rifles, which should sell for between £250 and £300. Finally, there's an intriguing pile of maritime and naval knickknacks, some collected by Duncan's father, which have caught Tom's keen eye. If those ships have got good provenance and uh, they've got a good history about them, then, you know, if you're under pounds, no problem. I think it would be worth finding out more about this mixed bag, so I've sent Duncan and Tom off to see maritime memorabilia specialist Peter Boyd-Smith to uncover some history and to see if there's anything of value. Collectors of maritime pieces will be on the lookout for anything naval or cruise liner related, from captain's hats to navy crests. The most collectible type of cruise liner memorabilia is chinaware, and a good investment is usually a ship's bell, which could also be useful at home. So what does Peter think of Duncan's collection? You've got some nice pieces here. Where did they all come from? The stuff that my dad's collected. It's just built up over the years. Maritime memorabilia can fetch anything from a few pennies to thousands of pounds. Some of the most collectible items are from the ill-fated Titanic, with one of its restaurant menus selling for £76,000. And it appears Duncan might have a piece in his hand-me-down hoard, which may be of some value. most interesting one is this, from the Eurydice. What? Why she, is that the most interesting? She was coming up from in the Isle of Wight, 1770-something, and she was caught in a squall, and she was full of cadets. She went down, and I think there were three survivors. About 140, 150 died. They raised some of the wreck, and this is probably a piece of the wood and a piece of the brass from her. A piece like this is worth more than all this lot put together. Put together is Peter going to make Duncan an offer for his shipwreck memorabilia? What sort of money uh, are you talking about for that? Right as about, your... about 50 pounds. Do you want to take 50 pounds for that? I don't think it's a bad offer. I think so. I think I'm going to accept your money. So that's 50 quid in the pocket, with the rest of his maritime memorabilia going to auction. I came along with an open mind, and um, I've come away with one less piece, so it is time. It's auction time now. And that's where we've now come to the Market House auction rooms in Tring to see how those pieces and the other selected items fare when the hammer falls. And while Duncan has left Maggie to run the pub, I want to start by finding out what he's decided to do with the collection of dusty wine bottles. What I've done is I've grouped all the wine together in the quantities, so they're going to go off to specialist auction hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So some of them could be worth about 80 to 90 pounds. Really? Yeah. So between now and sending it off, you don't want to be drinking too much of it, do you? No, definitely not. Good. So do you have reserves on any of your items today? I have gone for the reserves, but I've gone for the bottom end of the guide. Uh-huh. And to you're be, happy with I'm that? I'm absolutely happy with that. I mean, of course, it's one of these things. Everything must go. Yes. <laughs> Great. No, that's such a healthy attitude. It's really good. So, fingers crossed. Definitely. Duncan seems confident, but what does today's auctioneer, Stephen Hearn, think of the lots? Duncan has an interesting entry in the, in the Desert Orchid memorabilia. 
if we had a letter of provenance that's going to uh, clearly state that these were the plates off of that horse, it would fetch an awful lot of money. But we're going to have to sell it as we found it, uh, so people are going to be probably reserve their judgment a little bit on it. But it could go on. It's entirely up to the purchaser. We have the ebonised Victorian side table. It would have been a lovely piece, but it does need a lot of work. Duncan also has the collection of naval memorabilia, and uh, I think we're going to achieve a fair price for them. Well, we're about to find out because the bidders are gathered and the auction is set to begin. First up, it's the collection of Dad's maritime memorabilia. Will they float the bidders' boats with a reserve of £100? There you are. A lot of items in there. For if you're a heavy smoker, there's enough cigarette cases for the week. For them, 70 for them. 80 for them. 90 for them. 100 for them. Come on. 20 for them. 20. 120 has them. 559, five, thank you. Good for you. 120. A good result indeed to add to the £50 already made from the Eurydice piece he sold to the collector. And the bidding shot up to another £120 for the sale of the four ornamental antique guns. Now let's see if Duncan and Maggie have also backed a winner with the Desert Orchid shoes and its reserve of £200. The shoes that were on the horse when it won its first Cheltenham Gold Cup. 100's bid for it. 120 I've got, 30. Are you 40, sir? 150's bid now, 160, 170 bid, 180 bid. Now, 200 I'm bid for it now. At 200 pounds, goes in, I shall sell then to sir, for 200 pounds. Well done, Duncan, well done. Not half, considering just sitting there in the lock up doing nothing. So the shoes came in at their reserve of a respectable 200 pounds. But hold on to your horses because finally it's the ebonised Victorian side table, which Maggie was going to throw away. In top condition, Tom reckoned it could be worth around £800, but even though it's damaged, could still be worth up to £250. So let's see if Maggie's junk table attracts the bids. Uh, for it, ebonised desk, 100 for it or 50 for it. 5, 60, 5, 70, it's got to be, surely. Keep him quiet for the winter. 70, I've got it. Five anywhere then at seventy pounds, and it is yours, yes, ma'am, at seventy pounds. Okay. Thank you. Made the reserve. I'm happy. Happy. I'm happy. Good, Thank you. I think the damage was just too much for the bidders, but it's another seventy pounds to add to the kitty, and the last item is sold. So, Duncan, you sold four out of your five items at auction today. I did indeed. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff. How do you think it all went? I was very happy with the final ending you know, seeing people bid. We originally thought the stuff was worth this. I mean, if you remember, my mum was going to junk most of it. So, <laughs> you know, yes. it just teaches you a lesson, really. The one thing I've learned is that it's actually not that difficult to actually downsize, to clear, and you actually can have a little bit of fun and make some money. Now, have you cleared your unit? Yes. You have? Wow, well done. That is no. quite an achievement. We have got rid of pretty much everything. After commission, Duncan and Maggie have made £448.80 from their sales at auction. Add to that the £50 from the sale of the Eurydice memorabilia. Plus, Duncan and Maggie have emptied out the units so can add their yearly saving of over £3,200. And they're feeling richer to the sum of £3,728. Nice work, guys. So, what are they going to do with the money? Well, as I said, the one thing I promised my mum was to make sure I put the money towards renovating upstairs. So mm -hmm. we're probably 70% through the renovations. So it is all about making a home out mm -hmm. of something that wasn't. Fantastic. Have you enjoyed the whole experience? It's been a giggle. Of course, there's a trip down memory lane, you know, mm -hmm. pictures. Seeing, your dad's, seeing my dad's stuff, which was great. Getting rid of some of the old tat that we had was yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And it was actually being able to take the mick out of my mum for being a hoarder, because mm -hmm. as she admitted in the end, it was her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Duncan and Maggie have cleaned up and cleared out. And now Maggie can look forward to a renovated home and her son moving back in. Coming up, life is full of surprises. How did this come about, the Sipipi? <laughs> I slept on it and I listened to Sense, didn't I? Oh, well done. But how will Lynn's items stack up when the hammer goes down? Anyone like it? Anyone want it? Comes as no surprise to me. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. 
earlier, we saw bar manager Duncan and his landlady mum Maggie call time on their giant jumble of junk by clearing the lot. 120 has them. They're now clutter-free and spending the money they saved on renovating the pub for Duncan to move back in and help mum. It's now time to catch up with Lynn, who has drafted in best friend Will for support. Her belongings were suddenly forced into storage when she had to quickly downsize to a smaller house following the breakup of her marriage. Lynn wants to reduce her hoard and its costs so she can put her cash to better use on a deposit for a new home. So, does antiques expert Tom think her big pile of sell items will do the trick? So Tom, this is Lynn's sale pile in here. Is there anything that grabs your interest? There's not a lot of value here. Not a lot of value. Well, I'll give you some general auction valuations. And you've got a Regency-style marbling and lining laid bookcase there. 40 quid. OK. Pine bookcase? Yeah. 40 quid again. 30 or 40 pounds a week. Yeah, to make. sure. The six Victorian-style bloomback chairs? Yeah. 40, 50 quid, 60 pounds a lot, if you're lucky. They're Victoria-style. The Indian shisha wood table behind you? And that one there as well. Yeah, you've got two of them a lot. Um, these used to cost 195 each, and this used to be about 95 to 110 pounds each. They're now 50, 60 pounds for the two of them, if you're lucky. Not good news for Lynn. There doesn't appear to be much value in second-hand modern furniture, which is pretty much all she has to sell. You've got this table over here, Victorian-style mahogany table. Screw-on legs, I'll see outside. Yep. Um, but if you can get for that, put the legs back on it, if it makes 40, 50 pounds, you're doing very, very well. You've got some stag furniture over here. Yeah. Stag type furniture. They still buy that, and you probably get 50 pounds, 60 pounds for the big chest, and half that, 30, 40 pounds for the bedside cabinets. The thing is, when you tot all these things up, actually, it comes to a fair few hundred, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. If they sell on the D. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I needed to know, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, yeah, thank you. Did you have any idea about the kitchen piece appliances. How many pieces have you got? I can there see is, this. There is four, but unfortunately there's only three here because Lynn wants to keep one piece, mm -hmm. which is a large fridge mm -hmm. freezer. Mm -hmm. It's a very expensive kitchen that she had put in before she lost her home. Oh dear. I would try and sell that privately in the papers rather than an yeah. auction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's useful. Thank you. This whole process must be so difficult for Lynn. I think I've been pretty brave. Uh, I think we've got rid of quite a lot of stuff and I feel we've done quite well, mm -hmm. even if we haven't done the fridge. Yet. <laughs> Yet. <Yes. laughs> I think you've done really well. It's been a phenomenal amount of stuff to get through. Yeah. Obviously, I would have liked it to have been worth more, but of then course. don't we all? Obviously, a sense of disappointment reigns after Tom's valuation, but there is some value there and a lot of space to be saved. The items Tom has suggested with sell at auction are the Regency cabinet valued around £40, a couple of pine bookcases with an estimate of 30 to 40 pounds each. The mahogany table and chairs together valued at 80 to 120 pounds. A pair of Indian style coffee tables estimated at 50 to 60 pounds. And the mahogany bedroom furniture with an estimate of 80 to 100 pounds. And to help raise some further cash, Lynn has the option of selling her cherished kitchen appliances online, but that won't include the huge sentimental fridge freezer. Well, now it's the moment of truth as we've come to the auction room to see just how Lynn's items fare under the hammer. But first, Lynn has some good news for me. Well, you know we were talking about the kitchen stuff, the cooker, the yes. microwave, etc., and I didn't yes. want to let the fridge freezer go? No. I decided to let the fridge freezer go and we're selling it as a complete lot. How did this come about, this epiphany? <laughs> I slept on it and I listened to Sense, didn't I? Oh, well done. And how much are you hoping to get for the fridge freezer? Uh, well, well, the fridge freezer and all the other things, we're hoping to get somewhere in the region of what? About 1,200. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a real bargain for someone. Yeah, They're in very good nick and great for you to get that money as well. That's yeah. a deposit. That's yes. a deposit for somewhere for me to live, so... Good. Great news about the fridge but bad news about her auction items. Well, they, um, they revalued the, my lots and they revalued them down. So I see. I just thought that 
they're not going to go for very much, so I'm kind of a little bit concerned, but we'll see what happens. Mm. They might have done it for a kind of come and get me thing, mightn't they? Maybe, uh, maybe. maybe. But you've put reserves on these items, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have. The display cabinet and the bedroom set. Yeah. And are you happy with your reserve prices? Yeah. Up yeah. to a point? Yeah, up to a point. Uh -huh. um, I mean, if somebody really wants them, I would negotiate, but I don't really want them to go for a lot less than that. Yes. So with Lynn's sale items being revalued, what has today's auctioneer, David Harrison, got to say about them? Lynn sent in some furniture today, um, and quite frankly, modern furniture will not make a great deal of money. The stag bedroom suite, I think it might sell. Bedside cabinets are always useful. I have my doubts with the uh, cocktail cabinet. It's a thing of the past, it's 1980s. But the pine bookcases, open bookcases, I can always sell. We then got the two Indonesian low coffee tables, always popular. Um, I think they'll sell quite well. And then we've got the uh, Victorian style table and chairs. The chairs actually are very nice. There are a few people who have shown an interest and we've measured the table several times. So we'll see what happens. Nothing of Lynn's sentimental hoard apart from the table really stands out. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. And to get the ball rolling towards the deposit for that house is the mahogany cocktail cabinet Tom valued around £40. What's it worth? £30? £20? £10? Anyone like it? Anyone want it? Comes as no surprise to me. That can go home. That's not the start Lynn wanted. I hope the bedroom furniture, with the estimate of up to £120, can open the cash account. £50 for it. £30 for it. £20 for it? £10 for it? And she no one wants it. OK, we'll pass it by. With the first two of Lynn's items not selling, I'm worried she's going to be taking it all back home without a penny in her pocket. I really hope someone in the room wants the Indian-style coffee tables estimated at 50 to £60. Pounds. £40 pounds for the two. 20 surely. £20, pounds, thank you. 20 I'm bid. 20 A uh, 20 for two. It's not a lot of money. Maiden bid of 20, done, finished at 20. 20 pounds. Oh well. Finally, a sale. 20 pounds is below the estimate, but it's cash in the hand and some space saved. And with the pine bookcases selling 10 pounds above their top estimate, I hope that means the bidders are all warmed up for Lynn's final item, the mahogany table and chairs that Tom valued at up to 120 pounds. 50 there, in the Victorian style mahogany dining table with the extra leaf. Um, 50 I'm bid, thank you. 50 got 50 pounds at 50. 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5. Fill it up now. 95, 100, sir. At 100. Go on. At 100. Is that okay? At 110, yeah. thank you. Oh, 120. Good. At 120. At 120 pounds. Okay. At 120, in the middle, at 120. Well done. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well done. See, well I'm, done. 100 pounds was right to put on it because I wouldn't want to go for less. Good. Yeah, that's okay. 120 pounds. Good. Well, that's a sigh of relief. 120 pounds is bang on the estimate and a good price for Lynn. So, Lynn, how was that for you? Completely nerve wracking. So do you think you'll be able to downsize your unit now? Well, once the kitchen stuff has gone, I shall be down to one unit. Down to one only? Yeah, because all the stuff in the little unit will go into the big unit, so I'll be down to one unit. So after commission, Lynn has made nearly £200 from the auction. And the great news is she's managed to sell all her kitchen appliances online for £900. Plus, she's radically downsized her storage, so we'll be saving nearly £1,500 a year. That means Lynn is a load lighter, with her pockets heavier to the sum of £2,520. What does Will think of his friend's downsizing achievement? I think it's been cleansing for her in a lot of, a lot of ways, not just the units, but the fact that she's got rid of some old memories mm. and she's ready now to put new ones in place. I think as she's come around to it, she's realised that it's actually a way forward for yes. her. And live yeah. in the present and the yeah. future rather than yeah, the, the past. past. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I want to know if Lynn has made enough to start building that future. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to move into a, a place so it's, it'll be a deposit and towards the rent and 
As I've got no furniture now, I shall have to get some pieces that fit. I'm so pleased we've been able to help you. I really am. And I wish you all the best in your new home. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you very much. I'm really proud of Lynn. She's made some money and can now look forward to moving into her own place and moving on in her life. Both Duncan and Lynn have managed to downsize their units and make some hard cash along the way. And that's what it's all about. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.